Hi, my name is Michael Barclay. Thank you for joining Faith in Jesus Ministries. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered, there was not any room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came carrying a paralytic, carried by four of them. As they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus. And after digging through it, they lowered the paralyzed man down on the mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of law, a.k.a. the haters, were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God himself? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit this is what they were thinking. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say the paralytic. Your sins are forgiven, or take up your mat and go home. But you may know the Son of Man has authority on the earth to forgive sins. He says to the paralytic, get up, take your mat, and walk home. So he got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of everyone. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. How many of you know that is good all by itself? I want to preach tonight. I want to preach the word to really set the pace for this week. I want to preach from this thought, I got more than what I came for. How many of you would say by showing of hands that you were raised in church? Let me see your hand if you were raised in church. I just need to see who needs a counseling. I too was raised in church. If you raised your hand, you know that the life of the church kid is distinctly different than life of a regular kid. There are trials and tribulations that you go through as a church kid that you don't go through as a regular kid. In our household, I had to be in church. It was not a democracy. It was a dictatorship. We had to be in church every day the doors were open. Yeah, I got bold one time and got brave and told my father I wasn't going to church. Well, if I ain't going this Sunday, I don't feel like it. You know what my father said to me? He said, let me tell you something, boy. You have two options. You can get out of that bed and go to church, or I can kill you and take you to the church and have a funeral. Either way, you'll be in church. Because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Dinners were wonderful in my home. Because you could not eat your meal without my mom asking you this question. What's your favorite Bible verse? Or you can eat your food. That's the environment I grew up in. And to be honest, I'm glad that's the environment I grew up in. Because it is produced in me an insatiable desire for the Word of God. I am obsessed with the Word of God. It is the hinge on which my faith has its mobility. That is the only book that's still alive. It's the only book that's still breathing. The only book that has real power. There's nothing like the Word of God. You can do understand the other books you can read, but it's different. The Bible can read you. It'll show you who you are and whose you are. I love the Word of God. I believe the whole thing. It's true. It fortifies me. I love the Word of God. It fills me. We, to be honest with you, we do all have our favorites, right? My favorite section in the Bible is the Gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Give me those four and no more. I spend so much time in the Gospels, I feel like they're close personal friends of mine. I call them Matt, Marky Mark, Uncle Luke, and Little John. Because it's in the Gospels we get to see the ministry of Jesus Christ. See how he walked, how he talked, how he moved, how he interacted with people. One scholar said the Gospels are Christology in college form. Just a fancy way of saying the Gospels are the closest thing we have to a biography. The greatest man who ever walked the face of the earth. And his name is Jesus. I love what they're doing. The Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are talking about the Gospels in totally different ways. Almost like four film directors that are directing a film, same subject of film, but each have given their own seminar license to film. Each one of them give them a different HD view of Jesus. And that's why I'm glad Marky Mark is our director for the night. See, if you like long, boring documentaries, you got to read the book of Matthew. He is writing primarily to a Jewish audience, so he gives you fulfillment of Jesus being the fulfillment of over 300 Bible prophecies given in a 1500 year time span. Anybody who read Matthew chapter 1, get you some espresso when you read it. Excitement level is right up there with the book of Leviticus. If you like sci-fi movies, sci-fi movies, you got to read the book of Luke. Luke is a medical doctor. 
Luke goes in great detail to explain the miracles Christ did by how his miracles could do what modern medicine could not do. Some of those are like those gushy chick flicks that are, some of us husbands are meant to go see. You got to read the book of John. The movie Dear John, well read John. John, he's the disciple that's always laying his head on the chest of Jesus. He's all into love and he's very existential. Beginning was the Word, and where there was the Word, and Word was with God, and the Word was God. And people that like action, come with your boy to the book of Mark. Mark is Jesus Christ in action. No, Mark didn't even have time for baby Jesus. Read the book of Mark. There's no manger in the book of Mark. He skips Christmas and goes straight to full-grown Jesus. Hair on his chest smelling like Old Spice. Mark is not playing games with you. Mark wants to tell you before there was a... Um, before there was a Russell Crowe in Gladiator. Before there was a Mel Gibson in Braveheart. Before there was a Denzel. Please believe there was a King Jesus. When he stepped into a situation, it had to come under his divine authority. Because he wasn't just a good man, he was a God man. He was God in flesh and walking among us. Somebody give our gate, great God, a great praise. What a mighty God that we serve. And Jesus has been walking and gets to a certain house. The Bible believers believe it's Peter's house. All he does when he gets there is sit down to chillax. Sits down to rest in Peter's house. And all the people throughout the entire region start going, Hey, Jesus is there resting. Jesus is in town, right? Before you know it, people start getting on Instagram and Facebook and posting. Start putting the address on blast. Within minutes, the entire place is jam-packed with people. Simply because his presence sat down down to rest in one house because there wasn't even room outside the door this is standing room only this presence sat down to rest in one place what is it about the presence of god coming to rest in one place it causes people to be drawn from everywhere people instinctively know if you can ever get into his presence you can instinctively rest how many of you know something life-changing something supernatural something miraculous is going on if his presence shows up I think I know why y'all listening tonight, because you came to know that his presence would be here tonight. And when God's presence shows up, something is going to happen. Come on, can we just take a praise break and give God some praise? Like we want his presence. You want his presence to come sit down and rest in this place with us. That's why we came to Word Explosion, for his presence. His presence, his presence, that's what changes people. That's what revolutionizes your life, his presence. I didn't see him come to see your outfit. I came for his presence. I see the sick in this house saying, if he touches me, if he touches me, I know I'm going to be made whole. I see the boy playing Pokemon there and not paying attention. And I say to him, hey, boy, Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Pay attention. Jesus is in the house. That's why you're in trouble in school, because you don't listen. Listen to Jesus. You're going to change your life. I even see some ladies in the house because you know that Jesus was single in the ministry. Come on, single people. I just gave you some hope. If Jesus was single. I could see some ladies in the house talking about, girl, Jesus is fine, isn't he? You see that hair? I heard at a wedding last week he turned water into wine. Don't even ask me. I'm going to order water. They're all sitting around in this packed house, and then Jesus stands up and clears his holy throat. The Bible says Jesus preached the word. That's all he did was preach the word to them. That might not get you excited, but that gets me excited to hear people preach the word. I understand something powerful happens whenever the word of God is preached. The word preached is able to transform your soul. I'm so thankful to be part of a church that puts on a conference and call it Word Explosion. Have people preach the word of God. We're living in a day and age where a lot of people standing behind pulpits, but they're not preaching the word of God. They're preaching their opinion. They're preaching pop psychology. They're preaching their political ideology. And they wonder why there's no transformation in the people they're preaching to. Because the only thing that can bless your soul is the infallible, incorruptible, eternal, everlasting, immutable, unchanging word of God. There's no power in your opinion. There is power in that book. There is power in the word of God. I'm telling you, I love to hear people preach. I've been preaching since I was four years old. I've been preached to my stuffed animals till they got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, repented of the stuff. I love to hear people 
preach the word of God. But you got to understand there's a difference in when we preach and when Jesus preached. You understand that when we preach, we just have the word. Jesus was the word. He was the word made flesh. That means if Jesus wanted to preach a good sermon, all he had to say. And he would have been preaching because he is the word made flesh. Jesus could have wiggled his big toe and been more revelation in his big toe than anybody. Jesus was powerful, is what I'm trying to tell you. Jesus preaching the word. Can you imagine in that room that day? Can I tell you why I preach why I had six Red Bull today? Because I had six Red Bull today. You know why I preach with so much passion? Because you know when I get to heaven, nobody's going to want to hear what I have to say. Somebody, we don't want to hear any preachers when we get to heaven. The only person we want to hear when we get to heaven is Jesus. King of kings and the Lord of lords. What would it have been like to be in that room that day to listen to Jesus preach? The living word preaching the written word. And in the middle of the sermon, they get distracted. They say, wait a minute. Somebody on the roof? But well, you know what? A hole starts appearing in the roof. They put in a hole in Peter's roof. Let me explain of the disciples. If there's any disciple, you don't want to put a hole in his roof. It's Peter's roof. He'll curse you out. Peter would cuss you out. Peter would cut you. Peter's like, what the? And Jesus is like, watch your mouth, Peter. Watch your mouth. We talked about this. I'm the son of God. I'll make you a new roof. All of a sudden, they start lowering this man down, down, down on a mat. All the way at the feet of Jesus. The Bible doesn't tell us this man's name. It doesn't even do us the courtesy of letting us know when this paralysis occurred. All the Bible tells us is he was a paralytic man. In the Bible, when Jesus interacts with someone, rarely do we ever get the name. Often we just get their gender and their condition. There was a man with a withered hand. There was a woman with the issue of blood. There was a woman, what was her name? There was a man that was blind. And there was a man that was deaf. We just get their gender and their condition. You know what I think it speaks to? The human condition that has people identified by their conditions, by their issues. People love to label you about your current circumstances. It does the human conscious good to put people in categories. We love to label people. Yeah, people love to talk about you. You see her? She had a baby out of wedlock. You see him? He's on his eighth wife. You see her? Oh my goodness, she's an alcoholic. Isn't it funny how people love to label you about one moment in your life? How many of you are thankful that if you are in Christ, you are a brand new creature? Your past has been washed away. No matter what you've done or where you've done it, when God looks at you, he doesn't see your thoughts, he doesn't see your mistakes. He just sees the blood of Jesus and just sees it as been paid for. Somebody ought to thank God that you don't have to be defined by your past. The perfect people, be quiet. Those people that have issues, that have issues, that have issues, just thank God that he's perfect for you. His grace and his goodness will follow you. Hallelujah. Because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful I don't have to be defined by dysfunction. I'm more than my mistakes. Your issue does not have to be your identity. Let's label this man and call him paralytic man. He's in the presence of God, but he still has a paralysis. He made it to God's presence, but he still has a paralysis. If we can be real tonight, you'd be surprised the people lifting up their hands that are worshiping that have a paralysis. I'm talking about the thing that affects your walk with the Lord. Talking about the thing that you cry out to God, maybe in the secret place. If I and say to God, if I didn't have this, my walk with you would be a whole lot better. Isn't it funny how we come into church and we like to act like we don't have a paralysis? I've often said if Hollywood ever needed extra actors, they could get some good church folk that are acting. They should come to church and choose some church folk for acting. They don't need to go to Broadway. They don't need no lessons. They've been acting all their life. Because church people love to act safe. We had all come into church with the issue and come into that church with that issue, trying to hide that issue of what you came here for. God is good all the time. God has a position of putting you in the right place at the right time to hear the right word to be blessed and what God has for you. Thank God for these four friends. This the type of friends I want in my favorite list. I want friends like this. I want tear the roof off friends. God says you cannot be average. He's got more in store for you. I might not know what to do about the situation, but I'll do whatever it takes to get you in the presence of the one that does. He's going to meet with you today. I'll tear the roof off if I have to get you to meet with Jesus. No wonder Jesus responded to their faith to say to do whatever it takes for my friend to 
get a breakthrough. We all know that when someone comes to the roof, you will probably shut that sermon down. It's a big sermon interruption. The crowd is taken back, but they're also excited because this is what they paid their money to see. It's been rumored throughout the nation that Jesus has supernatural power. Oh, uh, when the dude hits the floor, I can see the crowd going, oh, it's about to go down. I'm telling y'all, Jesus has power. You're going to be good. You better get your camera and put this on YouTube. The first thing Jesus says to this man, this paralytic man, is, son, your sins are forgiven. When I read the Bible. I don't know how you read the Bible. I jump into the page. Imagine what it would be like to be that particular individual. God lets me know I ought to get kicked out of the Bible around Genesis. So he was going, oh, appreciate it, Jesus. That's why I came all the way down here, not to get to walk or anything. You forgiven my sin. That's the real obvious apparent issue. I don't need these legs. got to read your Bible. There's funny stuff in your Bible. He just realized this man didn't come to get his sins forgiven. He wants to do the moonwalk. But hear me, anytime Jesus appears to be acting ignorant, pay close attention. He's about to give you incredible insight. Because this guy didn't even realize how the kingdom really works. He didn't exactly realize that he was in the exact place and position that God will reveal himself to you. There's a place that's uncomfortable and exasperating, but it's often where God reveals himself to us. Whenever your experience doesn't line up with your expectation, God is trying to give you a revelation of who he is. Remember those people in the Bible, Mary and Martha, they had a brother, Lazarus, that got sick and just started coughing? trip at first but all of a sudden it gets worse and worse and he dies he said girl let me ask you something when jesus comes into town whose house he stays at he stays at our house it means this whole house is covered with the blood he sends a text message and says jesus the one you love is sick you jesus do what you do sin jesus is on the other side of town preaching the gospel and as he's preaching the gospel his text message sound goes off he said what i tell you about cell phones when i'm preaching jesus had you ring it Jesus sends him a text and says, This sickness will not end in death. Jesus has the audacity to walk in four days later after Lazarus died. He said, Jesus, if you would have been here, your brother wouldn't have died. They were expecting Jesus to come as soon as they sent word. And he didn't. He waited till Lazarus was dead. He four days dead. And he went to that graveyard and preached a three point sermon. And Lazarus came out and he said, Come forth. So you can get the right word to the right person at the right time so that dead thing can come back to life again. Give God some glory because what was dead is coming back to life. He is the resurrection and life. Said to them, Jesus is off the chain. I saw that he had only power to heal, not power over death. I've never known that power was in him until my experience didn't line up with my expectations. That thing you're complaining about, you can flip the script and start praising about it. It's just a setup for God to reveal himself to you. Jesus will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Jesus really is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. On somebody, he is still making a way to provide it for you. What is Jesus revealing? He says, son, son, your sins are forgiven. Only a savior can say that. Only a savior can make that declaration. And Jesus cannot deal with the root of the issue until he deals with the root of the issue. Because I am not just the God of your external circumstance. I am the God of your soul. Which is easier to say to this man, your sins are forgiven or get up, take your mat, and walk. So that you may know the Son of Man has authority over the earth. Can we just pause right there and thank God that we serve a God that has all authority. God bless you in Jesus' name. May this sermon bless you. If you'd like to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just say this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you say that prayer, a simple prayer with us, we like to believe you got saved. Get in a good Bible-based church. Put God first place in your life. It'll take you places you never dreamed.